Good evening, everyone. How are you doing? Very good. Yeah, yeah. Good. That kind of that's kind of sound a little little Cajun. How are you doing? <laughs> but, <laughs> no, um, you know, honestly, my my son kind of um, reminded me because he's. I said, um, you know, we kind of are doing, you know, Wednesday night Bible study slash groups smash up is what I actually said, and he said. Isn't a Bible study discussion? And I said, well, yeah, you're not wrong. It's just not how we've defined it. <laughs> so so we, we could really say we're moving into true Bible study this summer. So we could say that. But at any rate, we are going to do things a little different. We're going to do some teaching time um, from, well, tonight from me primarily from me, but you just never know who else might be up here, so you got to come and find out every week, Wednesday night through the summers, and I'm preaching to the choir because you're here, right? Yeah. yeah. So um, tonight, I want to get started with um, a new series that, uh, and, and what this one is probably about, I, I don't know, eight to ten weeks maybe. Okay, which won't take us through the whole summer. So we're going to probably hit a couple different topics throughout the summer, but it's going to be the same format. Okay, just so you're aware. But I really, I really felt led um, when I was thinking about what we were going to do. I have done this series before, um, but it's been about five years ago, and there's a lot of new faces that. I see out here that were not here five years ago. And so, and it's a great refresher anyway, but or we, I wanna take a subject, and, and, it, and really it's, it's a book uh, by Robert Morris. Anybody heard, ever heard of Robert Morris, Morris? If you haven't, and you're looking for some good things to go online and, and good teaching, um, he is excellent, yeah, sure. yeah. excellent. And um, he wrote a book called The God I, the God I never knew, excuse me, I about slipped up. Um, and so what I have done is basically taken that book and made it into a Bible study series that we're going to walk through, okay? So I'll just go ahead and plug the book. If you want to be overzealous and studious, you can pick up the book online if you want and read it along as well. Um, but you don't have to do that, but just, you know, that there is a book and that's what we're, we are actually going to be getting into. Um, so tonight I wanted to take the opportunity to kind of introduce the series. Uh, we didn't really, we have been so busy around here, honestly. Um, I've, I've felt like a ping pong ball the last eight weeks, it seems like. So, but things are winding down. I think Jack, this is his last week here. And so hopefully... I'm going to get more on top of things, but um, we don't really have an opportunity to really promote this real well. So what I want to do is introduce this tonight, and next week I'm going to ask you guys to spread the word about it, invite your friends, invite your enemies. Did you hear me? Because you might turn your enemies into your friends, okay? And if you're like me, there's not much difference sometimes. I'm just kidding. But uh, so, but but tonight we're going to do something a little different. Okay, I said this is a smash up. Um, you know, a lot of times we'll have a little teaching and then break out into groups. We're going to break out into groups right now, and uh, and and we're going to do this at the at the forefront. So we're just going to take I don't know 10, 15 minutes maybe. Um, well, 15 minutes. We'll give you 15 minutes to do this. And I'm going to call some group leaders, and we're just doing this kind of ad hoc because obviously there's no way to assign you to a group because your group may not be here next week, okay? Because <laughs> I know it's a summer and it's gonna be fluid and I know people are gonna be in and out and that's cool, that's really good. And I don't want you to think if you miss a week that you can't come back, please come back, okay? Um, because I know it's summer, we're busy. But we're gonna do this kind of ad hoc, so I want to take this group right here, and Pastor Larry, if you'll take one of these um, and you can be the leader, assign someone a, a leader of the group tonight if you'd like. And we're going to take you guys, just kind of huddle up, okay, if you would. So pull together um, right up there towards Pastor Larry. He, he smelled like he had his deodorant on tonight, so it'll be okay. Um, so <laughs> then I'm going to take you guys right here and Jack and, and, and Tony. <laughs> I don't know why it took me so long to get your name out of my mouth, Tony. <laughs> I really do know who you are. 
<laughs> it's called 53, almost 54. Okay, I wanna go, I'm gonna have you guys r come right, right over here, and guess who I'm gonna give this to? Thank you. You're welcome. So you guys slide right over here, if you would, for me, and be a group, okay? If you will slide right into this guy right here, I'm gonna give it to you, all right? So right here, if you guys wanna huddle up, Jesse, um, and I know your name and I forgot it. Anne. Anne, okay. I know I've met you. And then you guys right back here, okay? And I picked on Paul before, so I'm going to pick on Paul you All right, Paul. tonight again. So I want you to take just 15 minutes, work through this. It's just a group discussion questions. Um, as your group, come up with answers. Get to know one another if you don't know one another. All of that good stuff. you create a Wednesday night? Okay. All right. For all of you guys that are listening online tonight, um, I was making sure because I forgot to create a web, um, a live stream event. So you heard me talking to Meg to make sure that we were actually really live and I wasn't talking to no one out there. So we're going to do this together as well. Um, so if you're watching live um, or afterwards the recording of this, um, I've got some discussion questions right up here. And I want you, as you're watching this right now or later, to just kind of walk through these questions as well. Okay. And the first set of questions is even though You've never seen these individuals before. Do you have an image in your head of what they might look like? How about God the Father? I think I have an image of God the Father. God the Son, Jesus, well, that's flooded with images. <laughs> the Holy Spirit. Now I have to say, when I was first proposed this question, I don't think I could say I had an image of the Holy Spirit in my mind. So I'm curious if you do. If you're watching on Facebook, comment down there. I'll, I'll try to take a look at those comments throughout the week as you, as you, um, as, as you leave them. If you're on the, on the website, there's actually a chat in your feed that you can, or on a bar down below if you're on your phone, um, if you're on your computer. It should be on the side. Um, you can see that chat, um, and there's a general chat. Put these answers in there. Did you have an image of the Holy Spirit in your mind? Okay, next question is, do you think the Holy Spirit is a person or individual? Do you think the Holy Spirit is a person or individual? What? first comes to your mind. Give you a minute. Think about that one. And then the last one for our discussion panel that's happening right now in the house and for you. What was your knowledge of the Holy Spirit as you were growing up? What was your knowledge of the Holy Spirit as you were growing up? Now, since I guess I'm kind of acting as the group leader of our online discussion here. Um, oh, and I forgot to put that up on the screen. Sorry. There you go. What was your knowledge of the Holy Spirit as you were growing up? So going back, and I'll give you my answers to these questions. Um, when I was first proposed that first one, I already gave you the answer to that. God the Father, I kind of have a picture in my mind. I'm sure it's not reality, but kind of have a picture in the mind. Jesus, definitely have a picture in my mind of who Jesus is. But the Holy Spirit, I have to say, 
I did not have a picture in my mind of who that was. Do you think the Holy Spirit is a person or individual? Way back when, I think the King James Version of the Bible has really um, caused this question to become vague to us because it refers to the Holy Spirit as the Holy Ghost, right? Um, and I don't know that that, uh, uh, that probably kind of confuses us a little bit. And I don't know if I was asked that question, I might have come up with the answer. I don't remember when I was first introduced to the Holy Spirit, um, what my thought process might have been, honestly, because I was never asked the question. <laughs> but I'm trying to think back. And I think I might have said yes, but very hesitant because I wouldn't have been sure. So I'm interested to hear what you might think. And then the last one, what was your knowledge of the Holy Spirit as you were growing up? I'm going to save this one for Bible study because... I will actually probably answer that question right in the Bible study, but I am curious to know what you, if you were watching this online, what you think the answer to that question is or, or, or what, what your experience was growing up. So think about those questions. Take a minute, if you're watching on our website, find that chat. I should have kind of brought some tools for you to, to do that, but find that chat window, that general chat, jot down some of your answers to these questions. And uh, like I said, I'll be watching the feed and looking for those and try to comment uh, throughout this week. And if you're watching on Facebook, leave in the comments if you feel comfortable doing that. I know that's a little bit more public for them. So, um, but I'd love to know your thoughts or opinions or do a private message to our family church page, or a, a, yeah, a private message to our family church page, because I, I can find those there as well, if you feel more comfortable doing that. But I'm, I'm curious to know what your answers would possibly be to these questions. So hang with us just a minute. We're going to let these guys catch up with us since we're ahead of schedule. And uh, we'll be back in just a minute.
I'm really curious how they only, they took 10 minutes to get through the first question. It's, anyway. <laughs> oh, should have taken into account who the leader was. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just curious how it took you 10 minutes to answer the first question that's yes or no for each of those. <laughs> Next time I'm, 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 appointing, I'm appointing Daniel as the leader of the group. <laughs> Either. <laughs> Okay, so other than Pastor Larry's group, has everyone pretty much made it through? Good. And I don't feel bad cutting him off. Okay, so I'm going to grab this mic. And I'm just curious as to some of your answers. Um, and, and when I ask you, the, the, the group leader who is going to be the person that's holding the page, so <laughs> exactly, <laughs> that's, that's why I said that. Um, so uh, just kind of uh, on, on a lot of these, just kind of summarize what your group came, because there's probably lots of different answers. Um, but who is holding the paper over here? Randy. Randy. So Randy, um, just so people online can hear you. Um, to those, th that first question, even though you've never seen um, these individuals before, do you have an image in your head of what they might look like? As a group, what's the summary of God the Father? The brilliance, you can't see the details and forever reaching. Okay, okay, you guys, you guys went way too deep. That was yes or no, okay? That's yes or no. Okay, do you have an image of what they might look like, the God, God the Father? Yes. Yes, in your head, okay? Okay, do you have an image in your head of what God the Son, Jesus, looks like? Yes. Yes. Do you have an image in your head of what the Holy Spirit looks like? Yes. Was that the majority of the group was yes? Okay, cool. Awesome. Okay, this group right over here. <laughs> so, yeah, because I can't hear you online or across the right. So did, you, did your group as a, as a whole summarize have a picture image in your head of who God the Father looks like? Yes. Yes? How about Jesus? Yes. How about the Holy Spirit? We kind of had differences on what... Okay, kind of uh, uh, yeah. some yes, some no? Yeah. Okay. Paul, you're doing me a favor. Awesome. How about your group? God the Father? Yes. Jesus? Yes. Holy Spirit? No. No. Okay. All right. So, Daniel? <laughs> <laughs> we are yes on all. God the Father? Yes. Jesus? You want me to read all of them? <laughs> we got all yes. Of yes. The Holy Spirit? Yes. Okay, so it, it, that's kind of interesting to me that three groups, well, two groups said yes, one group, uh, half and half, and one group, no. Okay. Honestly, if I had to answer this, I've never been posed this question way back when, but in my mind, did I have a picture of the Holy Spirit? No. I didn't. So... I'm, I'm actually, I, I thought that might be the overwhelming. That was the whole reason for the question. So, so just really quick again, do you think the Holy Spirit, again, yes or no question. Okay, do you think the Holy Spirit is a person or an individual? Either one. I mean, person, individual, same thing. Okay. Personally. Yes or no? Personally and individual. Yes. Personally. <laughs> so, yes. Okay. How about your group? Yeah, kind of. Uh, okay. Okay. One said yes, and the rest were kind of on no. Okay. 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 Paul? Well, we said yes to a person, but not as an individual, since the Holy Spirit is a part of the Trinity. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Interesting. All right. 
Interesting answer. Okay. So, Paul, I'll start with you then on the last one. As a whole, just gauge um, how, was, how was the magnitude of your knowledge on the Holy Spirit of your group? Yes, yes. I'm sorry. So the knowledge of the Holy Spirit as we were growing up, it was kind of like those things have passed away. Okay. And almost a negative image that was portrayed by some of the older people in the church because okay. the Holy Spirit was almost a bad thing and more based off of the way other religions did things back at that time, kind of gave a negative image of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Okay. That was a sum- kind of a summary of your group. Okay. We were still kind of going over that one, so we didn't really finish. Didn't really finish. Yeah. Okay. Is that a dodge? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Tony or Randy, I'm sorry. That's who had the paper. Sorry. So kind of the magnitude or summary from the group of, of knowledge of, of the Holy Spirit. Uh, some said that um, all of it was the same. And as growing up, no, they didn't really know the Holy Spirit. And I specifically had no idea of it. Okay. But even the ones that did go through church, it wasn't like a wasn't something that they were thinking about constantly growing up as, oh, this is a person or a thing. So maybe not very open. Yeah. Maybe the name, yes, but no. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of heads. Heads nod. Okay. <laughs> Daniel? Oh, no, I'm going to answer this one. Oh, okay. Um, Pastor Larry handled snakes. That's almost, not quite. But I mean, that's where we're, we were almost, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Me, like, things have passed away, Daniel. Zero. Okay. And the rest of the group? Well, you cut us off. <laughs> oh. <laughs> gotcha. Fair. Okay. Fair. All right. I don't know how I'm going to be more explicit with my questions, but I will try next week. So, <laughs> multiple choice. <laughs> but that kind of takes the discussion out of it a little bit, but. Well, I, okay, okay. Point, two, touche. <laughs> All right. Well, just some things to get you thinking, and that's why I wanted to start off with this right away, okay? Some things to get you thinking about this. Um, like I said, um, I think the reason why I'm teaching right out of this book, Robert Morris's book, is... I truly believe as far as some of the best teaching on the Holy Spirit and who the Holy Spirit is, is found in this book. Um, And I've read a lot of books on the Holy Spirit. I've been exposed to a lot of things about the Holy Spirit. And so just as an introduction, Acts chapter 1 verse 4 says, once when he was eating, that's Jesus that's talking with them, he commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised, as I told you before. John baptized with water, but just in just a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then if we jump down that same little passage to verse 8, it says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Now, I want to take just a minute and read, I told you, I was very upfront that I'm studying right from Robert Morris's book. So just an excerpt from his book, it's actually the very first page of writing in the book, I want to tell you this story that he says, that he, he puts here in the book. So let me read this real quick. The knock at the door startled Irene Atkins. The 79-year-old great-grandmother wasn't expecting any visitors. A cautious peek through the peephole revealed a well-dressed, silver-haired gentleman with a kind of face that struck her as vaguely familiar. It was something, something about the eyes and nose. As she opened the door, her certainty grew. The stranger definitely reminded her of someone, but who? It would take her a while to realize that the man's face indeed bore an uncanny resemblance to one she knew better than any other, her own. Irene's 73-year-old brother, Terry, had come for a surprise visit. It was quite surprising because Irene never knew she had a brother. Back in 1932, in the depths of the Great Depression, a desperate and confused young English couple unhitched their tattered camper trailer on the side of the road and drove away. 
police later found three small, hungry children inside. Irene, at 10 months of age, was the youngest. The three were placed in separate foster homes and grew up unaware of the other's existence. Meanwhile, the young couple eventually achieved some stability a few years later and had another child, their son Terry. When Terry was 14, his parents revealed their shameful secret. They told him of the desperate straits in which they'd found themselves and of the wrenching decision to abandon the trio of hungry mouths they could not feed. Shortly thereafter, Terry began a lifelong quest to find his siblings, especially the sister his parents had named Irene. He searched in vain for almost 60 years. Then came a breakthrough. He learned the name of the agency that had placed Irene and her siblings in foster homes. Not long thereafter came the day, April 13th, 2010, when Irene Atkins discovered the wonderful brother she never knew. In the discovery, the rootless orphan found a source of answers to questions she had carried around in her heart all her life. I believe I know how Irene felt. Now, this is Robert Morris talking. Several decades ago, after many years of struggling to live the Christian life and even working successfully in full-time ministry, I finally discovered the God I never knew. And in the discovery, I found not only the source of answers to every question I've ever had, but a dear friend as well. One who has made my life richer, fuller, and more exciting than I ever dreamed possible. I am referring, of course, to God, the Holy Spirit. Now, um, Robert Morris goes on in his book to talk about how he grew up in a church, part of a denomination that avoid talking about the Holy Spirit. And from some of your group discussion results, some of you might be able to relate quite well with that. He even states that his pastor's only advice before going off to Bible college to prepare for ministry was watch out for people who talk about the Holy Spirit. Now, personally, I think that's sad. And the reason why I think it's sad is because I too also grew up in a similar church well-intending people who really misunderstood and missed out on an amazing relationship that God intended for every disciple of Christ to experience. Now, a few years back, Pastor Larry posed this question to the staff, and it's the one that I put in here as the first question. Do you have an image of what Jesus looks like? Do you have an image in your head of what God the Father looks like? Do you have an image of what the Holy Spirit looks like? I've never had had those questions presented to me until he did this. This has been five years ago. Many can say yes to the first two questions. And I thought few would say yes to the third. However, the majority of the group said yes to, 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 that, to that third question as well. I would have to say I knew the answer when I was asked the question. But if I put myself back when I first grew up in church, I don't know that I could answer that yes or no. Um, or no, I don't, I, I would say I, I wouldn't have known the answer to that. I, I don't think I would, I don't think I had a picture of the Holy Spirit in my head. Um, and so as we introduce our stu study series that we are going to be on for a number of weeks, I'd like to really start out by telling you just a bit of my personal story if that's okay with you guys. The church where I grew up in since I was about 10, actually 11 years old, I think, it was a good church, good people. Prior to that church, we went to a mainline church where I knew about God, but I didn't know God. I could tell you the Lord's Prayer. I, we prayed before meals, we prayed at bedtime. Can still remember the prayer. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. God bless mommy, daddy. Anybody have those children, child prayers that you prayed every night? Okay. So, so that same one? That's, <laughs> okay. That's awesome. So I knew all about God, but I didn't know God. My mom passed away just before my 11th birthday on Mother's Day, May of 1981. And I got mad at God. 
I became angry. When I was 12, I remember sitting in church, listening to the preacher do his normal closing. There was an altar call at every service that I ever attended in that church, like clockwork. But for some reason, on this Sunday in October, it struck me different. Because I remember, and honestly, I don't really think this is an effective evangel evangelical tool. And so my personal opinion is I don't use this tool. But the, pa the preacher was, was doing his normal altar call. And he said the words, not hellfire brimstone, just kind of matter of fact. Do you know if you would die today that you would go to heaven? That's the question he asked. And for some reason, and he probably answered, asked that question almost every Sunday at the end because the altar call was always there. But for some reason, this particular Sunday in October, it hit me different. And I realized I didn't know the answer to that question. And so that Sunday, I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I went to youth group until I was 16 in that church. I even went to Awana Club. How many know what that is? Okay. In that church. But one day things changed for my family. My dad was diagnosed with lymphoma, a type of skin cancer. And he was getting uh, testing and things done at Columbia Hospital, actually, the university hospital right here in Columbia. Columbia. And we had a cabin at Lake of the Ozarks just up the road in Sunrise Beach, Missouri. And so they would actually, um, it was winter months that I remember um, that this particular event happened. They would, uh, they would, they would drive down from, because we lived in Iowa. Um, that's where I grew up on a farm in Iowa. They would drive down to Columbia for doctor's appointments and whatnot, and then go on to the cabin at the lake and stay over the weekend and come back. Well, they went to a church service while they were there of a church that we had began to attend. We spent quite a bit of time in the summer at that cabin at the Lake of the Ozarks. So we decided if we were going to be here, we're going to go to church because that's what good churchgoers do. I about said a denomination. I don't want to put anybody under, throw anybody under the bus tonight. That's not my goal, so I won't say it. But um, so we did, and, and they had went to a church service. And my mom and dad experienced a service that they had never experienced before where the Holy Spirit was moving. And they came home and told my sister and I of all of the events. And we thought they were weird, to be honest, that they had fallen off their rocker. In fact, I can remember my sister was, as we were listening, I remember one of her responses, probably I don't know, the only response I think she had was, well, okay, that's all right, as long as you didn't speak in tongues. And my dad replied, well, your mother did. So we thought it was both weird. I thought they had kind of gone crazy. But I noticed something different about them. And I don't think you could have paid me money to admit it, but I wanted it there was something inside of me that just, I wanted it. Growing up in our church, I remember thinking to myself that I knew there was more. I just didn't know what the more was. I remember living a roller coaster Christian life. Anybody remember that? Can kind of kind of test it or know what I'm talking about there. So my sister and I, after we heard this news, tried to disprove it from the Bible. That what they experienced, this moving of the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, that we tried to disprove it from the Bible. We spent hours that evening at the kitchen table with study books, my sister's five year, four and a half years older than I. Um, and so she was looking into a lot of these things. And basically by the end of the night, we couldn't. And that was an eye opener for me, for sure. And I remember that whole week 
because they had come back Sunday night, I think, Monday-ish, talked to us at the beginning of the week. And I remember that whole week just thinking about that something different that I had noticed in them. My sister and I ended up going to a church with a friend of ours, and I had an experience with the Holy Spirit that changed my life forever, and at age 16, I was changed. I was filled with the Holy Spirit, and an amazing relationship began in my life. It totally revolutionized me. I wanted to be in the Word more than anything else. I didn't watch TV. I'd go to my room, and I'd open up my Bible, and I'd read it. And how many of you know that for a 16-year-old, that's weird? Well, at least it was in my neck of the woods. As God does, this very same time that my mom and dad were introduced to the Holy Spirit, God was working in different ways. News began to spread about my dad who during this experience had received a healing of lymphoma. And so my dad, who never really went to Wednesday night church, he was a farmer, busy, you know, how farmers are, he's a workaholic, and never went to church on a Wednesday night, went to church on a Wednesday night and told his story. Felt led of the Holy Spirit to do that. And within a week, the deacons visited our home and told us we either needed to be quiet or pretty much told us, to leave. We found a small church that taught on the Holy Spirit, among other things, and started going there Sunday morning, Sunday night, midweek, even when we had to drive 45 minutes to get there. My dad even installed a satellite dish, okay? Now remember, this is like 1986, and so we're not talking about DirecTV, that didn't exist back then, okay? Or if it did, it was too expensive for you know, poor folks like me, us to, to, no, we're talking the big dish. How many know what I'm talking about? I mean, this thing was about as wide as a car, all right? And I can remember, I, I, I dug a line for the cable from where we mounted it to the house. Now it's in Iowa, so I learned digging in Missouri was a whole lot different than digging in Iowa when I moved here. But anyway, we installed a satellite disc just so we could get Christian TV and it stayed on 24 seven. We were hungry, I was hungry, and we were soaking it all in. And that hunger led me to Raymond Bible Training Center where I learned so much about things I had never known about God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And today, I have an amazing relationship with the Holy Spirit, but I will add, it didn't happen overnight. It wasn't really until Bible school that I really started learning about who the Holy Spirit was and all that he desired to do in my life. And I don't dare say that I have arrived and know, there's, there is, and, and know all there is to know about the Holy Spirit. That would be stupid, because I don't. But this dynamic, full life that Jesus promised to believers is a natural outgrowth of an intimate friendship with God, the Holy Spirit. I didn't come up with that. That's actually out of Robert Morris's book, The God I Never Knew. But I can say it's true. It's true in my life. When I was introduced to the Holy Spirit and he was activated in my life, the words in this book came off the page, literally and began to just become so real. How many of you have maybe been in math class in high school and just not getting something, just not getting something, just not getting something, and all of a sudden the light bulb goes on and you get it? How many have had those? Come on, we've all had those moments, right? That's exactly what the Holy Spirit does to you with this book and things that pertain to life and godliness brings it off the page and the spiritual light bulb goes on in our hearts. Why is that? We're going to find out a lot more of why that is in the upcoming weeks. Next to understanding the grace of God, experiencing his salvation in my life, getting to know Jesus through the red letters of these pages, 
understanding who the Holy Spirit is was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. It was the life changer completely. Still today and all that I do, relying on the Holy Spirit has been key. He has been a comforter, an intercessor, a teacher, and a guide to me. I attribute success in my life to him. Without that guidance, without that teaching, I wouldn't have had things in my life turn out so good. And I've had a lot of good things in my life. I'm married to one really good thing who I believe is way above my abilities and uh, pay, um, Anyway, I married up is what I'm trying to say. But most of what I have learned has never been burning bush experiences, folks. Just a still, small voice. First Kings verse nine, chapter 19 says Elijah didn't find God in the windstorm, in the earthquake, or in the fire. Elijah found God in the whisper. And oftentimes, that's just like how God is. Genesis 28, 16, surely the Lord is in this place, and I wasn't even aware of it. I wasn't even aware of it. I, my prayer is as we walk through this study, uh, yes, I believe you will have a much better understanding of who the Holy Spirit is and why he is here, but my prayer is that you will begin to hear that whisper every day. Because I am truly convinced I mean, like I said, I was filled with, uh, filled with the Holy Spirit, activated by the Holy Spirit, however you want to say that. Doesn't matter, same thing. When I was 16 and I'm next, well, next, this is May, so yes, next month I will be 54. So I've had a lot of experience walking with the Holy Spirit. And I will say I'm a slow learner. But my prayer is that you would begin to hear that whisper each and every day because through my experience of all those years, I truly believe the Holy Spirit is always speaking to us. We just need to take time to stop and listen. And when we do, he's there. You may have grown up like me not knowing the Holy Spirit, much less having a relationship with me. Or like me, you may not have even known the Holy Spirit as a person, because I really didn't. I mean, like I said, I kind of attribute that to the King James Version when it's Holy Ghost. No, we're going to find out. Jesus is not, or the, whole, Jesus, the Holy Spirit is not Casper the Friendly Ghost, okay? The Holy Spirit is a person. John 14, verse 16 says, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The Holy Spirit is a person and is a part of the Trinity. However, we're going to find out that the Trinity is unique individuals made up of one. Let me teach on that in just a minute because it is a part of the Trinity, the Godhead. But the best way that I guess I have ever heard or structured the Trinity in my head is like the Duggar family. I was picking on, I was seeing who I was going to pick on. Okay. We have, well, there's quite a few people, but we'll just start with the, the one tier. Okay, we have, we have Pastor Larry, we have Karen, we have Trent, and we have Pate, right? All individuals that make up one what? Duggar. One family unit. So if I said the Duggars, that's not just one person, right? That's 
unique individuals that make up what? One. And that's exactly how you can think of the Trinity, the Godhead. Unique individual persons that make up one God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. All three separate, very unique, very specific roles. But yet, all one. And so, the Holy Spirit is a person and is a part of the Trinity, the Godhead, the reason why we baptize the way we do. Matthew 28, 19, Therefore go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right? That word Holy Spirit there is pneuma. And the definition of that Greek word pneuma is the third person of the triune God, the Holy Spirit, co-equal, co-eternal with the Father and the Son. Now, how we can separate that, as a lot of churches have unfortunately done, and not talk about the Holy Spirit is really a... I'm curious, how do we separate that? Any guesses? Because if we really say that the Holy Spirit isn't any more, then what do we do with God, the Father, and Jesus? Right? Is he the stepchild? <laughs> no, he's not. So in summary, for tonight, we're almost out of time, four minutes. This person, the Holy Spirit, is not a ghost. He is a person. He is not a thing that floats around the earth. He's not an it. The Holy Spirit is a person. He is just as real as the Father. He is just as real as the Son of God, Jesus. Next week, who is this person? We're going to delve into that next week. So, I encourage you, again, invite your friends. Maybe there's some people that you know that have had questions about who the Holy Spirit is. Make sure they're aware of this. This isn't my stuff, all right? I am getting it right out of a book, but it's going to be a really good series. I promise you that, okay? Um, and it's the, just the way some of the things that he puts, and I have, I'm going to read some excerpts from his book because it is so good. I couldn't make it any better um, of, of how to explain, even next week, who the person is of the Holy Spirit, what his role is in our lives today. Not what it was, but what it is today, right now, for us. So, come out next week. Come Sunday, I need all the help I can get, support I can get, all right? You guys are the faithful chosen ones, so um, maybe you can keep the rotten fruit and veggies from being thrown at me, okay, on Sunday. Pastor Larry will be out of town, so I'm going to be up here teaching and what I felt like God had really laid on my heart. So come out and, like I said, be my, be my cheerleaders, if you would, on Sunday. And uh, have a great week. I hope you got something. I hope this was helpful tonight. We'll dive in next week, so be ready.